Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back with another brand new video. A brand new video that is here to discuss and reflect on yet another defeat, meaning it's now three defeats in a row. But I'm going to be honest with you, right off the bat, I feel completely different. In, well, maybe not completely different because I'm still sad and frustrated that we lost that game. But there is a different feeling and a different vibe. Maybe you'll know what I'm talking about based on that loss compared to to the others, and I can't even believe those words are coming out of my mouth, but give me a minute or two to explain how I'm feeling, because of course we're here to talk about Rangers nil, Napoli free, and if you missed the game, if you didn't see the game, if you've just watched highlights, if you've just seen people's tweets, you'll sit here and think we got absolutely pummeled again, and you'll be fuming, wanting him out the door, him dropped, get the usual suspects out the team, and you'll probably think like that, but that was not... The game people, stats, highlights and tweets, then they tell the story of matches, which is why we always sit here and spend 15, 16, 17 minutes discussing the story in as much detail, because that game of football right there is infuriating for completely different reasons that the Ajax one won, where, where we had... Low energy, we were lacklustre, we barely put a fit in, we never really tackled, we didn't look interested, we looked like we just didn't want to be there at all, and we all remember what that looked like. But it was different this afternoon versus a very good Napoli side, a side that has scudded Liverpool and a side that sits top of the Serie A. We battled, we fought, we tracked, we tackled every single blade of grass right until the moment of the game changed like that. And the change was a red card and a penalty kick. Something we'll go into a lot more detail in a couple of minutes. But I, I just want to give you my thoughts and opinions on the overall feeling right now. Because it actually took me a wee bit longer to get home the day than normal. So I was able to see what people were kind of saying and seeing a couple of opinions. And I'm honestly shocked that there's so many people absolutely foaming at the mouth at this Rangers team. Digging out this guy, digging out that guy. Because maybe I'm completely wrong and you're going to shout me in the comment section which happens quite a lot, but I'm not like that at all, like, me, in my brain, it's hard enough to battle and fight and get something from a Napoli side when we're at full strength, but when we're down to 10 men for 35 minutes in the game, when we face not one, not two, but three penalties in the game, and we have a player that comes on the park that has not one, but two glorified howlers to give the opposition two late goals, which I think really changes the entire complexion of this entire game, and it's probably why people are frustrated and angry the way that it was, because anyone who watched that full game from minute to the last freaking whistle saw a Rangers team that you could see something in and saw some fight. Again, it's no good here to sit here and I'm certainly not going to cheerlead the lost people because I am frustrated because I think we've done more than enough to get something from this game, especially with the chances that we had in the game that we just threw away. But again, it is a different feeling and vibe than what I had after Ajax because I can sit after that game and say, right, we got beat but we went doing fighting. So aye, that's honestly my initial thoughts and gut reaction to the game of football. Might change after I've seen the game or anything like that, but aye, the, the viciousness that's online right now, wanting Geo sacked and everything like that is certainly not the camp that I'm sitting in, people. But again, there is real frustrations because I thought the way we started this game and transitioning in to the game recap as we go was absolutely excellent. And that's not what I was expecting when I saw the start in 11 when there was not one Summer signing in the starting 11 for a Champions League home match. I don't know if that was a message to the board. I think I think we can all agree that the board have really let this team do it. And Ross Wilson, whose obviously responsibility that is to bring these people in and improve the squad, hasn't done enough. And that's why probably we go into the first Champions League home match group stage game with no summer signings. But even with that, I thought we started really positively and we really should have took the leads just 30 seconds in the game. Honestly, I seen it back just before I started recording and it's even worse than what I had visualised in the noggin people because it was electrifying. The start, the crowd, the players. We get out to Tavernier. Tavernier does what he hasn't done in the last couple of games. Puts in an absolute ball on a dime. Morelos steps back off the defender, gets his heat on it, he has to score this goals. I'm no wanting excuses, people, it's the Champions League, you can't get more than a couple of them in a single game, that's as big as it's going to get at this level, and I would just never took that chance, and that will stay with me 
all freaking night. And I, in my opinion, has to score or at least get on target. And I think it's one of those chances that if he does get on target, he's scoring because the goalie is completely planted. But probably just a wee timely reminder, like a wee ringing of the bell of the quality that we face. Napoli, from that moment and from the crowd, weren't they phased at all? Or even gifting that chance because they hit 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, and they get the ball in the box. And Golton does well with a header, but it drops to Zielinski, who we talked about in yesterday's video, who just pops up at the right place annoyingly. And it does it again here and unleashes a shot that rattles the outside of the crossbar. And you went from 30 seconds before, he the hands, thinking how have we no scored to hands like this and saying thank you that we haven't conceded. But over the next 10-15 minutes are the moments that a lot of people are forgetting because Ryan Kent got in the ball, he skinned two Napoli players, he pulled it back to Tavernier who shot, ends up getting blocked and then just a couple minutes later Ryan Kent once again busy B on the ball finds Scotty Arfield and Arfield is brilliant here by the way, sets himself has a shot, I think there is a slight deflection, maybe I'm misremembering it and somebody can let me know in the comments but I think there's a slight deflection but anyway that just makes it harder for the goalie and the goalie makes a phenomenal freaking save so these are the moments here that how we've stood up and how we've created these chances against a very good side that has me feeling slightly different and no throwing all my toys at the pram because these are moments that were just inches away and it's again sometimes football can come down to luck and you've probably heard that saying it's better to be lucky than good well we were good on occasion today we just only freaking lucky. But with every attack that Rangers looked promising and nearlies and maybes were created, Napoli reminded everyone of their sheer quality. And again, I want to try and stress that in the video because not Napoli are a very good side. I think people, <laughs> I don't know why they aren't rating them or anything like that. They are a good side. This is a side that scudded Liverpool again not too long ago and set the tip of the top. So they've got something about them and they showed that just seven minutes later after that chance from Scotty Arfield. We get the ball, they get the ball down, sorry, the left-hand side. It's a gorgeous ball in behind the Rangers' defences. 1v1 on the left-hand side. Val McGregor, but the big man makes himself, spreads himself and gets just enough on the ball. That's a great 1v1 saving. I had like a wee flutter in my heart because everyone knows where I sit with McGregor. Again, you can see his faults and everything like that. And I said in yesterday's preview video, it's almost unfair that we're thrusting him in with everything going wrong and asking him to put, his, put us, sorry, on his back. I say that was almost unfair, but the lad had done that this afternoon and fair play to him. He was as good as everything I could have hoped he would be. Brilliant moment there. And I was about to say McGregor moment, but I'm not counting that is the McGregor moment because the big man had something to say in the second half that again will get lost in the translation of what is a 3-0 loss. And then again, the referee has to make it all about him as the Napoli player out in the wing wants a free kick even though he wasn't touched so he's gone mental and I mean he's gone mental with this referee's face if that was a Rangers player I'm sure he'd have got a yellow card and yes I mean that but he lets this boy scream in his face and eventually that boy goes away and then Five seconds later, the throw-in comes into the same player. Lundstrom comes and gets the ball cleanly, but the boy's screaming and rolling about and want this. And Lundstrom says, that's never a foul. He's arguing with the referee, and he's gone like that because he's obviously saying that he's being conversed by the guy that's rolling about greeting because he screamed in his face. And the, the referee just walks up and gives Lundstrom a yellow card where it was night and day, the difference in the way they were getting spooky. One of the players was screaming in the ref's face that wasn't booked. Lundstrom goes like that to the referee, and he does get freaking booked. Again, ego was questioned, and that's what brought the yellow card. But despite the silly free kick getting awarded, it still had to be defended, and I thought Conor Golton was very good in this game, probably the best that I've seen him since Leipzig away, if I'm, in my personal opinion. He got his head on everything, he was had a great block just a minute or two later after they get a free kick down the other side. It looks like it's going to end up in the back of the net because there's a couple players, but he just scoops his head up. Brilliant defending for the big man, and there was one late on just before half-time as well, where the ball gets played in behind James Sands, who's a bit sleeping, but Connor goes and comes and bails out the centre midfielder slash centre back. But we weren't done there because we continue to fight to the end of the first half and we get the ball out wide that drops down to Morelos who has a free shot. 
but he ends up swinging and missing and again it's a massive chance I know he's rusty I know he's no hard too much fit but it's the Champions League people versus the opposition these are as clear as cut as you're ever going to get in terms of having a shot and goal but aye we go in at half time and honestly all I felt despite the, maybe the, the slight disappointment and frustration about not scoring was pride because I went right we're actually battling we're actually fighting and we're making the opposition work have we rode our luck on occasion aye but we've not had the other on the other side so I was content I was happy at half time I just wanted to see Mayer of that intensity and no matter what happened I wanted to see Mayer of that intensity and for me we got it coming out the second tap because Probably going to say something that's probably going to get laughed at or anything, but in the first 10 minutes of that second half, the only team that I saw that was probably going to end up scoring first in the game was Rangers, because every time we got the ball, we crept up, we started causing mistakes at the back, they were starting to get a bit, um, just a bit nippy with the ball at their feet, they started hitting long balls, they were giving it away, we were winning it quickly, and then like that, and the way it happens is so infuriating because I've already seen it getting clipped a couple times and mocked and everything like that, but if you saw yesterday's video, I said there was, they'd be inviting Conor Golton to have the ball and everything like that, and then he would try and spin him in behind, but that's not even really what happened, Golton actually makes a very good interception, but the ball ends up bouncing away and the Napoli player flicks it in behind his head, it's a foot race between is it Bar it's Barisic and Sands? I think it was... No, it's Lundstrom and Sands. Actually, sorry, I'll just correct myself there. They're trying to narrow the gap. The boy's running through and going just before he hits it. It looks as if, to me, James Sands gets enough on the ball. And again, the ref... Just look at what the referee does here because there's a play on, like, the linesman doesn't put his finger up or anything. But the referee just slows the game down. Doesn't let anybody know. Like, normal referees' cadences and every flat. If there's a penalty, they do that early so everybody knows what's happening but he walks up like he's John Wayne slowly making sure the spotlight's on him and then he just goes like that like what's he doing in slow motion is he in a Zack Snyder full of man wake up and grow a set ref like I can't be bollocked with that now I thought it was harsh at the time and I didn't think it was a penalty but after seeing it despite my frustrations with this referee and his attitude and just the way he goes about his business I actually do think this is a, re uh, is a penalty kick sorry I don't think Sands actually gets the ball I think it ends up nutmegging him in all honesty and I think he gets the man's first but again you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but ups up Zielinski who we talked about in yesterday's video for taking the penalty kicks and it's a wonderful save for McGregor I've popped and I'm up there, and then the rebound gets slapped in, you're thinking, well, uh, that's probably just in line where our luck is right now, and then there's a VAR check, you see it, and everything like that, and you're like, okay, what's this then? And then it looks like um, the Napoli players went too early, so it's forced a retake of the penalty kick, and you're thinking, right, there's a chance here now, is it going to go the same way? It's psychological warfare up here, and McGregor just shows every bit of his experience because the second save is even better, in my opinion, because I gets the penalty better the second time, but McGregor matches it, and he is now the fifth oldest player to play in the Champions League, and that's the best I've seen McGregor in a long time long time, I thought he was brilliant in every aspect of the game, wonderful penalty save, we're now down to 10 men, and this is my problem with people being overly angry and frustrating and mocking me online for saying the performance was much better and everything like that, we were in this game when it was nil, nil, when it was 11 versus 11, we were battling, we were creating chances, and then we made a mistake, there was a red card, we faced two penalties up to that point yet we went down to 10 men and we were still in the game we still had Kent going on a wee run we looked as if we still had a little bit of something but then the pressure continued and they got another penalty kick a third penalty kick in a game and this one again despite me having problems with this referee I think this one's a penalty kick as well and I know that will annoy a lot of people because everyone's frustrated about this one but it's I think because he puts his hand up if I think if it's gone down it's no one I seen an even worse one be given against Man United in the Europa League last week where the boy a hit off the guy's sliding knee and hit his arm like here and they gave it so now that I've seen that given the one on Barisic looks clear as day, and whether that's the rules, I don't know anywhere these days. But in my opinion, for what I've seen, 
It's a penalty kick, so up steps Napoli to take the third penalty to Rangers, and this time McGregor doesn't get there, and it upsets me because he dives the same way, and you can see he almost blames himself, and I'm like, no, McGregor, get up, big man, we're only in this game right now because of you, and... Aye, we end up going 1-0 behind and then it became, can we try and nip on? Because if we could kept it there, could we have kept in the game? I don't know, people, it's ifs and maybes. But we made a couple changes, we tried to throw the dice and then on came Glenn Kamara as a part of one of the substitutions, by the way. And I just thought it didn't work again. And I'm sorry to keep saying the same stuff, people, but McGre uh, Glenn Kamara isn't a centre attack midfielder. He's not a centre defensive midfielder. He's a phenomenal footballer when he's in a midfield three. And he's gorgeous to watch. And he is a very good player. Despite everybody turning on him now, I still think he's great. If you put him in a midfield three, he's a great midfielder. But he's not got the defensive instincts and he's not got the attacking instincts. So we keep putting him in positions that he's no actually good on. And that's what sh the shining light of this second goal in this game is all about. Because watch him. Watch the Napoli player. Just go back and watch it. I know it'll be painful. But just look at the run. Glenn Kamara is so, so lackadaisical in the responses because he's just not got the instincts to sniff out chances. If it's a Jacko, if it's a Lundstrom, they're probably getting there and stopping this goal or at least stopping the shot. But it's just no his game. It's a lo lovely bit of build-up play. Pass inside. Glenn Kamara's got the wrong side. Always goal side and everything like that. But he's not there. And it ends up being 2-0 to Napoli. And that's the gut punch because you know it's game over now despite everything they've gave in the game. And you're just sitting there saying, that's crap, man. I knew it's going to finish 2-0. And it really, really shouldn't have been. And then ends up being 3-0 people. And again, this one's, I, 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 I would say criminal. But I think even the second one's mere criminal. Um, is as criminal in my opinion because they give it to Kamara. He just gets robbed. Of the boy just gifts the ball to Napoli. Napoli run through, sweat it around the goalkeeper and slap it in to the back of net. There could be a real argument that Glenn Kamara was on for ten minutes and he was Napoli's best player overall in the game. And I didn't want to be saying that, people. But I just to tell you what I see. Two late howlers from Glenn Kamara completely changes the picture and the complexion of this game. Because I even think after three penalties, ten men, if we go get beat 1-0 there, I think a lot of people have maybe seen more in my point of view. But I can understand why people are frustrated and upset and screaming, oh, you're accepting getting beat free. No, I'm not accepting getting beat. I'm still annoyed at it, people. But all I'm talking about is the level of performance. We can play our best stuff and get beat off of Napoli. That can happen, but I think there does need to be a wee bit of leeway and a little bit of respect given to the players, given what they've given this game, considering they were against a Napoli like this, with 10 men for 35 minutes, go a red card and conceded three penalties. I think we can give them a little bit more respect than maybe that we're seeing online. And that's honestly my thoughts and opinions on the game. I think we had several chances. And again, a sharper Morelos puts him away and we're having a completely different story. If maybe a Cholak, if the chances fought to him, is he putting them away? I think the stats suggest that he would be. It's, it's one of those things that will probably be frustrating us. But I saw enough in terms of these players because I thought they chucked it last week and I thought we were in a real scary position. But they rolled their sleeves up and played. Now that's the standard. It's no all right today once versus Napoli, and that's fine. That's the level of application we need to see every week. Now they've had their blip, they've had their bad games. Let's see that now and let's start getting results. And aye, that's all I'm going to say in the game of football, ladies and gentlemen. It's obviously not a great day to be a Rangers fan or anything like that. It is frustrating to be in this position. I don't think we should be in this position. We had enough opportunities, but. That's the way it goes. And can I just say one last thing about the referee? Rangers got a penalty in the last minute, which was never a penalty as well, by the way. That's how it shows you how bad the referee is, because it hits the guy in the stomach, right? So he goes away and checks VAR. Now, if you've ever seen English football, and I'm sorry, I'm just adding this on. I just want to explain and paint the picture of this referee. When they come back, normally, after they look at the monitor, there's a whistle, and then they go like that, or they go like that if it's a foul, if it's a penalty. This guy, slowly, from VAR, walked all the way to the other side of the park to the spot that where the ball was and then done like that as if he's teasing and winding up these players. It was madness, people. It's all about the laddie's ego and he honestly had me sitting here missing Willie Collum and you'll know that doesn't come out my, my lips easy. P 
people, but aye, that's my thoughts and opinions on the game. I thought the referee was horrific in terms of some of his handling of situations. There should have been a couple of yellow cards handed out versus Napoli. I thought we hadn't made enough opportunities to hurt the opposition. We didn't, and we ended up hurting ourselves with three goals, in my opinion. Sands missed time challenge that gave us a penalty away, which was pretty much handing a goal, but McGregor wrestled into it. Barisic being a wee bit silly and naive now, putting his hand up in the air and then Glenn Kamara gifting two late goals. It's the Champions League, people. You can't give an inch, never mind, a mile. And that's all I'm going to say. What about you? Let me know down in the comment section below. And I, I can imagine I'm going to get shouted a lot for this because I'm already getting it online. But I don't care. I'll never tell you what I think you want to hear. I'll tell you what I think and then we can discuss it in the comment section below. So, aye, let me know how you're feeling. As always, I've been Siege and Overnight 2. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.